Gentlemen, welcome back to the Empire Dirt. Today, a treat especial. In commiseration with Lorena Bobbitt Industries. What, too soon? Every man's worst nightmare. Wait a second. Did I just assume your gender? A dingus lopper. This post-apocalyptic dystopian Mad Max tool brought to you from the scumbags at works. Freak deek. Scumb uh, works, works. You gotta let the tool do the work. Let them ponies run. Oh my god. <laughs> this fucking thing. Time! Oh, if that don't give you a blingus in the dingus, I don't know what will. I've also had the foreskin to think about putting on some bucking spikes so you don't lose your footing up a tree. In addition to some first aids, I did not have sex with that monkey. Yeah, a sinus irrigator and some high test. What's that uh, German stuff? Jägermeister. Oh, no, that's for the other end. Sick. That is some sort of built-on speculation, and luckily they give you the fidgety spanner in order to figure out what you're going to do with this when you get her out of the box on Father's Day. I think they built this just specifically on the hopes that they'd be in a horror movie. Speaking of horror shows... Technical literacy ain't what it used to be, apparently, especially in the marketing domains. Rated voltage, allow me. Rated voltage, let's follow that off. Voltios, five amps. I'll roll back to kaput. This is rather compliant, as you'd want a receptacle tip to be. Polypropylene. Oh, yeah, this thing's kind of big. Oh, yeah, framing, you fuck. Tough to get in shot here. One thing, well, right before we get into the meat of her, I, these things with the protective tip, what a pain in the arse. You got to get just the right extension cord to fit in there. And then there's some dingus bubbles on the end of this. Uh, what they're for, I have no idea. Maybe a clip for something. This looks like an RFID tag, but it's rather stout. And they've marked on there. Uh, PA6 glass fiber reinforced 30%, so that can't, that's that's more expensive than any component on the saw there. I uh, think we're ready to have a, a look under the petticoat. Speaking of, about the nicest thing I can say at this particular juncture about the tool itself is it doesn't stink. There's something about cheap tools in the molding that stinks to high heaven, whether it's recycled plastic or or it's prognos as uh, reused condom receptacle tips or what i don't know but here we're in we can see this huge piece of molding here that's a monster quite a monster sized die especially considering how thin it is the pressed and punched and formed metallic teeth here really stiffen her up and then we've got uh, rubberish bumper on here that actually feels like rubber but it can't be no it's molded and that's oh yeah that's got a factory blemish there clearly now, this is a fairly labor intensive uh, clamshell here we got a number of sub assemblies in addition to these teeth needing the, the rivets with the, the big washer so all that needs to be riveted in there also is some handwork here with the, I believe that's an access cover for something or other. Let me get my fidget spanner. Yeah. And then there's a... <laughs> uh, this thing, I'm still aghast at what you would ever use this for, but... No account for some people's kids. So we see... On here, it's been retouched. The mold itself has been retouched. Oh, I see. Okay. So they've marked this, uh, the recycling mark for PA6 with the glass fiber, but also because this is a secondary assembly, 
they've changed this. And this, uh, very likely, used to be PP, and they changed it over to uh, glass fiber reinforced nylon. You see in here, that's been knocked out by the tool and die maker. And quite a bit of hand polish on, on this little part. Some nastiness in here, but you can't see that from the obverse. I'm going to show you this mechanism and then I'm going to hip you. Well, that is angry rant as to why it is a horrible design. Okay, so what you got to do is you get your dirty dick beater around uh, the, the gland end and the other dick beater here around the base and you got to give her a push. You give her a proper push and it's not a light push either. And we can see this is moving about, traveling about six inches, nine inches if we're talking to our wives. And this moves about an inch, about six to one. Okay, fine. Now, here's the problem. And problem the first is ergonomics. We are human beings. Uh, that is, we're virtually, we're this close to being monkeys. And monkeys climb trees. Humans are far better at pulling than at pushing. Far, far, far stronger at pulling. Anytime you can pull, if you got a, if you got a, a set to and, and turn all of strength and arm and mind to a task, you want to be pulling. You don't want to be pushing. So in this case, especially you got a yard or you're an olden or something, pushing is the wrong method for actuating this saw. It's a terrible ergonomic design. So, or ergonomic less design. So what we got to do here, and the other side of that is we are spring released and arm strong applied okay so you're getting through the cut you're starting to cut you're pushing you're pushing you're pushing the further this spring uh, moves the further it compresses the harder it is hooks law the more force coming out of it so now you start off fresh at the cut and then as you're pushing through you're pushing through you're getting weaker and weaker and weaker and weaker and the spring is getting stronger and stronger and stronger so Kind of stupid that way. One thing, eschewing safety aside, what you could do if you're not thinking about safety, there's another way to do that. Uh, I just haven't thought of it. What you could do is have it a heavy spring and that actually applies it. That actually does the cut sort of automatically. And then you use a pulling motion to retract it. The thing is you get into a homeowner appliance and if you got any kind of dingus lopper what's automagic um, chances are some hidget's gonna cut his you know what off so they they really can't do that but but in an industrial design you know where you'd have uh, something to keep the idiots away and uh, the, that's the problem is you you make something idiot proof and the world invents a better idiot what you would want to do is make this so it's spring applied and then Armstrong release rather than the obverse, which is what we have here. So this thing is made for, you're gonna get tired using this thing. Speaking of the handle, a little surprise in here. Well, we got the regular strain relief, we got the handle, we got a micro switch. It's actually got a heavy detent. It doesn't feel like a, a micro switch, even though it just has the nub of a micro switch. That feels like a proper switch. These guys, I didn't think these guys were legal in 120 volt systems with the, the plastic encased uh, chintzy little, uh, what do you call that, terminal straps. And then we got what thicker phone cord. The kids' phones used to have cords. This is what you'd be, you'd have this hanging off the receiver. You'd have a receiver and then a, a box unit mounted to the wall. And this, if you were a, a cool kid, this would be long enough to go and hide out in the closet. As chintzy as this is, it could be far, far worse. But the interesting thing about these low usage tools, how many, how many hours are you going to, you know, is a landscaper going to be running one of these things? No, it, it, the thing will not last. You have a look at this now. That's the slide for the handle. Every time you actuate that, it's got to run in this groove. We got sintered metal, uh, just a bushing with some grease in this real thin walled slot. How long is that going to last? Your guess is as good as mine, but probably not particularly long. The other thing is the interesting and cheap solutions to technical problems. Have a look at this. What we got 
is a gas priming bulb, just like on a carbonator on a two smoke infernal combustion engine. And then in this Zamac enclosure here, in this Zamac gear reducer, they've cast a cam. So as every time that you actuate this thing, let me see if I can't, it plunges the bulb and the bulb is what lubricates, it pumps the lubricating oil to the chain. So you do not want to be running this uh, without or for no reason. I guess you wouldn't, well, unless you're a dummy, but we've already proved that dummies abound, myself included. You wouldn't want to run this too much without actuating it back and fro too often because you run out of lube. Here's the tensioning mechanism, also rather novel. It is on an Archimedes spiral, and as we turn, it comes up against and tensions the chain to the proper amount, and then we lock it down. So there's, there's a little friction clutch or something in there what prevents this from turning once it gets to a certain amount of, of torque, of, of force out. That's a cute little mechanism, this Archimedes spiral chain tensioner. And we can see there's, there's a bunch of springs. And what's going on here is when the bolt engages so far, it actually doesn't, it, it doesn't engage on this Archimedes spiral. It doesn't, that is, it doesn't clamp the Archimedes spiral down. The spiral is relying on a heavy spring in there to give it its tension. It's impossible for this mechanism to overcome the spring tension and and clamp down on that. So you're only ever going to get a preset amount of tension out of that Archimedes spiral. And then when we actually bolt it up, it locks up solid on this spigot and the bolt head. And that's how we get it to fix properly while still maintaining the correct tension on that chain. Having a closer look at the laminated steel bar here, battleship gray and painted just the thick just a mop and bucket routine. Of course, you got to wear all that crap off. But I like this. They've added a, an idiot check here. The problem is, of course, if you're going to put the blade on backwards anyway, you're not going to be looking at that. But at least maybe it'll give you a clue if she ain't cutting worth a shit. <laughs> so we got to access uh, an oil hole here for the uh, for the end sprocket in order to not burn up all the typical accoutrement that you would expect on a on a bar we get the drive sprocket actually this is called a on the bar my mistake that's not a sprocket that's an idler it's a toothed idler so in this case interestingly we see how loosey-goosey that is now, is that poor manufacturing now, this would be a metal injection molded part or Look at the design. Instead of being a squared off shaft on both sides for the drive, they've just gone and added a positive kind of keyway, or what would you call it? A key in there. And that's what allows it to get uh, to be to be so sloppy. I don't know if that's coming to the fore. That probably transmit torque quite well, but the sloppier it is right from the get-go, the less long it's going to last. You do have a situation in chain of cogging because it's not a round section, right? You have small links of square sections. So what happens is the chain speeds up and slows down the whole time it's running as it goes, as it cogs around tuck, 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 the sprocket and idler. So every time it cogs around now, you're getting a Tuck, 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 tuck through here. We might, well, I don't want to, I might not be able to catch it on the high speed. Now that is not Zamac, surprisingly. I thought it was Zamac because of the terrible surface finish. It's, yeah, look at that. It's actually uh, straight aluminum. Uh, very poor casting, indeed. But wait, there's more interesting slash horror show foibles involved in the manufacturing. So because this has to move back and fro, what they've done is they've added a, a centered metallic bushing, a, a centered steel bushing 
Not a stitch, not a stitch of lubricating oil on there, nothing. You hear that? So that, yeah, it's only on the one side, of course, because on this side you need access to the blade tensioning mechanism. So that is, that is the whole and totality of the pivoting mechanism. Here we're into the gearbox, the uh, speed reducer. This looks like a different manufacturer of that die cast aluminum. See, it's got different markings. AL with a, with a proper sized L. And this guy says uh, AI. Yeah, AI on that. A total different fitment and, and finish on this part as opposed to this part. We have an actual machine shaft turned and then, yeah, that's been milled or, well, that's a different, that might be a live tooling on a lathe there. You look at the pattern on there, it looks like a turning pattern, but it's on a flat. Interesting. And we got one of those felt, just some felt breather, uh, just felt breathers, I guess. So when the thing heats up, uh, it doesn't blow the seals right clean out of her. Looks like a hobbed gear and heat treated. And then in here for the speed reducer in the motor section, we have a big, yeah. So that's an involute spur gear and then a helical gear there. So there would be some, there would be some axial thrust on this probably held in by a big bearing in here no that's an interesting way to make that because that is a roller bearing this guy is a roller bearing no good for axial thrust whatsoever and this guy just a little ball bearing okay so it must be the axial thrust must be forced up against there uh, I guess it's riding up against this inner race here and uh, taken up. The thrust is taken up by the, by, the, by the ball bearings. Not a bad looking gear. Quite small. Looks like two different kinds of plastics. This is marked PA6 glass fiber reinforced. This doesn't look like it. It almost looks like an ABS or a PP. No markings on it at all. Let's have a quick... Yeah, there is glass fiber in there. You can hear them cutting through. We'll get the brushes backed off. Nice brass housing for the brushes. That's good conductivity, especially good thermal conductivity. But it is just in on the plastic, so you get the brushes hot and she'll melt right out of her. This front bearing assembly, well, the front housing and bearing holding assembly, is quite rough. There's got to be a word for that, but it looks like it gets stuck in the mold. And we're having a little bit of problem because of the field. Well, this has got to go to the field and then on to the brushes. Let's see if we can't uh, somehow. That's in there pretty good. That's a little tappy tap tap can't fix. That's why the plastique looks different. It is different. PP. Uh, so not not that that kind of PP polypropylene, as opposed to the nylons the six six, the PA six six. Sorry, uh, the windings look good. Again, held in with uh, plastique, so you melt that right out of her. But it's only five amps. That's <laughs> it's it's only five amps of voltage according to the box on the armature, the motor rotor here. This is a universal motor. It's bi-directional because of the fan. You could turn it both directions. And this will run on DC, of course, because it's self-commutating. They got a little Buna end condom on the end of her just for vibration damping. The brushes, or rather the, uh, the comb bars, look good and beefy. You can see the, the wear-in pattern of the brushes. Quite soft brush. Nothing down here. To, uh, to increase the longevity of the stake-ons here. Normally they'd have uh, recently, up to a few years now, we've been seeing lots and lots of these motors that have epoxy around the periphery to uh, prevent that from breaking off. That's generally where the, if the brushes aren't gone, 
and the motor's not working. If the if it first first problem is the brushes, of course, second problem is one of these little com bar connections break. And you see this is a bi-directional motor because of the the fan blades are straight. And it's a little centrifugal fan in this in this ducting in order to cool it. Now you see the difference again. Fairly nasty looking front molding piece here and not a bad looking molding piece here. This is um they're calling it I don't know why why you'd have uh, PA66 in the front and PP in the rear, but that's what they've decided to do according to their own markings. Well, I told you I needed to lay on the healing bench uh, for a fortnight at the very least. Canadian healthcare being what it is, we got to turn over the bed. So we'll go ahead and crank, uh, crank some tunes, Justine Bieber and... Shania Twang and so forth and uh, get her back together in order to test her out. There you go, back together. Only took but 10 minutes. You believe that? I got some magic beans for you to buy. It's gonna run like a right, like a alarmed hominid now on account of all of the extraneous components I removed for weight savings and extra speed. Let's see, it's already got the speed holes yonder. Look at that. This thing, it's an oddball tool, rather in search of a project. Takes one to know one. But there's, I don't see any particular use for this tiny little, you know, all this gland end and stuff. Why not just use a chainsaw? Yeah, I get safety. Is it actually safer though? Now this stuff is the weirdest bar oil ever done seen. Have a look at that, see, no stictivity whatsoever maybe built for the arctic we're gonna give her safina schleiden now what are you finger boys half a turn fart let the smoke out or will she run absolutely no good can come of this Testing now the veracity of the box claims five amperes recall was the rated voltage fnar fnar <laughs> We're going to run it no load. Oh, four amps, no load. That means uh, under load would be slightly more than five amps for, yeah. So the, the marketing wank of tears, they done good. I'm just checking with the high speed camera that weeble wobble on the, on the gearing. It's, it's moving at a high rate of chooch. And while it's uh, rendering here, I don't, I don't see anything in particular. We're going to perform a factory delete on this guy so that we can see what's going on while we cut. We're going to test this saw and the only uh, test that actually matters, real world conditions, a chainsaw box ectomy. And we'll get some high speed footage as well if and I can figure it out. Sorry about this here. Key E E or tact. Oh, highly, highly effective. As witnessed by the teardown, the chintz factor is fair to middle, but how does it actually cut wood? Is there something wrong with me? I'm beyond the obvious. I I just want to see what it would do. I, I, I. <laughs> Problem solved. It. <laughs> yeah, that's about right. Other than the obvious, just for tits and pickles, this thing ain't got no fucking use at all. Uh, uh, Safety-wise, it's still a chainsaw. Give it the respect it deserves. It's, uh, it's a man-eater, to be sure. The uh, thing is, you're constrained not only by the gap of the jaw here, but also the gullet of the jaw. The gullet of the jaw is more critical because, as you see here, you don't want to be cutting with the tip of your uh, implement. Yeah. 
you want to be cutting with the shaft of her. But yeah, I don't know. I really don't see a use. You know, there's a fair bit of Chinesium, but it's not horrific. It's for a home gamer tool. It's clearly a home gamer tool. Will it last you? It might last you the 10 hours you need to clean up your yard uh, after a hurricane, something like that. But the, the real constraint is this gullet here because you can take any size saw. If it didn't have all this accoutrement, you could still cut a larger than that diameter tree or branch or whatever. But this is really just for, for pruning. There's better options out there. For the cost of it, I just don't see what is the fucking point. Spanks for watching. Keep your dick well away from this monstrosity.